Welcome to Science with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to be covering food chains, and food chains represent the flow of energy between living things. So let's start with where all this energy starts, and this is very important. All of the energy in a food chain starts with the sun. Now typically, the sun is not shown within a food chain, but like I said, it's very important to know that this is where all of the energy in a food chain comes from. So let's move on to producers. And in our example here, we have grass as our producer. Producers have the very unique ability to capture energy from the sun and convert it to food energy. This energy helps plants grow, reproduce, and survive. Photosynthesis is the process in which producers do this. They harness energy from the sun and turn it into chemical energy that organisms need here on Earth. When you think producers, think plants, algae, and even some bacteria. Producers produce or make their own food energy. Next, we have primary consumers, so they consume or eat the producers. So for our primary consumer, we have a mouse. When the mouse consumes the grass, the energy from the grass is transferred to the mouse. And this arrow here represents the flow of energy from the grass to the mouse. The way that it is pointing is very important. If it was pointing the other way, that would show that the grass is consuming the mouse and getting, getting energy from the mouse. So again, the arrows represent the flow of energy and the direction they are pointing is very important. Then the flow of energy will go to a secondary consumer. So our, our example it has the mouse being consumed by a snake. The snake is getting its energy from the mouse, which got its energy from the grass, which got its energy from the sun. And lastly, we have a tertiary consumer, which means the third level consumer. So the hawk comes along and consumes the snake. Therefore, the energy from the snake is transferred to the hawk. Now the hawk is at the top of this food chain and has no natural predators within this ecosystem, so it would also be called an apex predator. Eventually the hawk returns energy to the ecosystem once it dies and decomposers are able to recycle the energy and pump it back into the soil. We will talk more about decomposers in another video. I'll drop that link down in the description. A couple of important notes. Food chains do not have to be these four levels. Food chains come in many different sizes. There can be more than these four levels, there can be less. These levels are called trophic levels. And remember, the sun provides the ener energy for every food chain, and these arrows show the flow of that energy through the food chain. So there you have it. Those are the basics of a food chain. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.